Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming here. I uh, hope you guys are having a great Ignite. So uh, the next uh, one hour, 15 minutes that we have, uh, we're going to talk about how to create a seamless office uh, migration experience, especially if you guys have add-ins and macros uh, used in your company. right? So uh, this is the, that's the goal that we want to arrive at. And one of the tools that we're going to talk about extensively during, you know, to achieve this goal is uh, the Office Telemetry Dashboard, right? So we're going to talk about how this tool can be used uh, towards a seamless migration experience. How many of you guys have heard of Office Telemetry Dashboard? Have you heard of this? Wow, OK, that's good. Uh, how many of you have tried using it in your company? OK. So thank you for that. Uh, so if there is one thing which I want you guys to take, take away from today's session is uh, for you to uh, learn how easy it is to uh, deploy and use it, and how easy it is to get insights out of it. Uh, so you know, I want you guys to get that empowerment hopefully by the end of the session. So that would be uh, what I would like to uh, do. So uh, before we get started, my name is Anand. I work as a program manager in the Office team. And uh, my team owns the Office uh, telemetry dashboard. And uh, so I'll, I'll talk about uh, you know, how to uh, go about using this tool. And towards the end, I'll also want to talk about uh, what are the things that we are thinking uh, within the context of the overall Office app compat. So here is the agenda. So we'll talk about why this is needed, first of all. Uh, I'm sure most of you, uh, you, know, you are managing Office and Windows deployments in your company. And uh, you, would, you, know, you would know what are the uh, challenges that you typically face when, you have, when you're considering migrating from a 2013 to 2016 or a 2010 to 2016. Uh, so before we move on to the rest of the agenda, first, uh, through a quick show of hands, how many of you uh, use 2013 as the primary office in your, in your, in your company? OK, thank you. 2010? OK, still. Uh, anything uh, below 2010, 27, 23, 2003? Not much. OK, so it's, all, it's either 2010 or 2013. How many of you are already on 2016 as the primary office deployment? OK, great. So uh, one thing, one cool thing about what we're going to talk about is uh, irrespective of what uh, version of Office you're uh, running, even if you're running on 2016, this is still relevant. And we'll talk about why this is still relevant. It's not just about uh, a migration story. It is all about telemetry and monitoring uh, how Office is being used. So first, we'll talk about why this is needed. What are the challenges typically when, you, know, uh, you face when you are uh, migrating Office? The second thing we'll talk about uh, is just an overview of how this telemetry system works because of certain uh, uh, design uh, that this, is, this tool has been designed to work on the premise, uh, which means that no data leaves the company. There is a certain setup which is needed, and there's a certain, uh, we'll talk about the conceptual uh, idea behind the telemetry dashboard. And the third part is where I'm hoping to spend most of the time, which is a hands-on demo of uh, what are the kind of insights that you can glean out of uh, the Office telemetry dashboard. And finally, we'll talk about uh, you know, what we are, you know, how these tools are going to evolve. Uh, obviously, there's not much I can say right now, but I want to you know, definitely hear from you guys what we, what, we, what we are currently thinking about. Does this make sense? Yeah? So why do we need this? Uh, why, uh, why do we need to invest? OK, before we get into that, uh, we have a quick survey. I know many of you guys already use Office Telemetry Dashboard. Even if you're not using Office Telemetry Dashboard, uh, I, I, I do ask you to consider taking this survey at the end of this session. Uh, this, is, uh, this is basically to uh, help us understand what, uh, how you guys are using it and how we can make it better. So we obviously are, uh, we want to learn from you guys. We want to uh, learn from your experience. And most importantly, we want to make the tools even more uh, flex, uh, capable and even more uh, uh, give more precise in, uh, insights. So we would love to hear from you. So surprise gifts for, you know, for one lucky winner. Uh, so you can do this at the end if you want. And uh, we'll move on to the, the first part of uh, why we need to talk about, uh, why we need to even consider this. Looks like most of you guys have already you know, you have played around with Office Telemetry Dashboard, so you know why this is needed. But still, I will uh, quickly go through this. So one of the things that we want to understand uh, when you're 
moving from, let's say, 2013 to 2016 is, you want to make sure that all the solutions that you build on top of Office uh, continues to work, right? And uh, because when you, you know, Office is not just the software that you use. Office is a platform for many of you, many of us. So we build add-ins, we build VB applications, we have macros. So we need to make sure that you know, uh, when uh, when I migrate my company to a newer version of Office, all of these artifacts continue to work, right? That makes sense. Because some of these are, uh, are very critical to your, you know, to your line of business. The second thing is uh, more, uh, more towards the actual end user, not necessarily the power users. These are just documents, you know? Uh, the documents, are they uh, rendering fine? Or just the way the documents have been created, uh, will, they, will they have any issues in 2016? And the third part is third party apps, that is third party add-ins. The first, uh, when we talked about, it's more add-ins which are developed within the company, but it's a different challenge when you, uh, when you have third party add-ins installed, and you need to make sure that those continue to work as well. And finally, uh, because of all of these, a combination of the, the first three, uh, it might not be that the, the, you know, there is a functionality breakage, but it could be that you know, because of the change in the office version, maybe the performance is getting impacted. So there are many uh, things that we need to look at. And uh, so these are the, the, these are the kind of questions that we want to address using the telemetry dashboard. So one thing is, uh, when you consider all of these problems, uh, especially when you consider the, the, you know, the, the number of it, if, if, if you, if, for example, if you, if you look at things like macros, uh, if you look at the number of macros which are running in your company, in my company, let's say you know I am running a, a 25,000 seat uh, you know deployment, and if I just look at the number of macros that are running, it can be quite overwhelming, right? So it is it is not sometimes it may not be uh, manually you know if I if I had to do this manually, just making sure that every single macro works in 2016, it might not scale out at all, right? So uh, we are just trying to avoid the temptation of not doing nothing, right? Because there's so much stuff to do, and uh, there's always this temptation that, you know what, let's just, uh, let's just not do it. Let's just pretend that this problem doesn't exist. So just to, uh, just to avoid falling into the temptation, uh, that's where uh, this tool helps, because it tries to not only enumerate the problems, but also prioritize the issues. So when we are approaching this problem, I want, uh, like we can think of this as four step this, in, the, in these four uh, steps. So first is to identify what solutions exist, right? It's an inventory problem. Because uh, when you're running a company of you know, 25,000 or 50,000 seats, you don't know how Office is actually being used, right? Uh, which department has created what kind of add-in? What uh, you know, power user has created what kind of macro? You don't know all of them, right? So the first step is to understand where you are that means to understand all the stuff that is happening, all the, all the add-ins, all the macros which are uh, running on, your, uh, on all the devices in your computers, or in the, in the enterprise. So that's step one, just to understand the, uh, the inventory. And to do this manually, you can understand how difficult it will be, right? You need to talk to, uh, you know, you can probably track it through your uh, manual Excel sheet, you can, send a for, you can send a survey, you can send a form, but this is not again going to scale. So that's the first problem that we want to solve. The second problem is prioritizing it, right? So if you don't do the second problem, if you don't do the second step, the first step could actually be a more of a problem because you end up with this huge list of add-ins and macros and documents which you don't know whether it's actually used or not, right? Uh, there could be like a lot of add-ons add or you know, ma macros which are actually installed but not being used, right? So uh, you know, uh, one thing which uh, we, we, we know I, uh, it's very important to understand is just knowing what macros are, are out there on the, in, the, in the company is actually of zero value for us, right? It is not useful. Just to understand what add-ins is installed on a computer, it is not adding any value. What is adding value is to find out what are the critical add-ins, what are the add-ins which are actually used and which have potential issues, right? Otherwise, it's just noise for us, right? So that's the second thing we need to do, which is to uh, cut the, uh, you know, uh, cut the noise and look at the ones which really matter, right? That's the second step. And the third step 
is to diagnose any issues, right? Uh, to diagnose if there is any potential problems which are currently happening, and to diagnose if this add-in or this, this solution could be a potential problem in my target environment, which could be 2016, right? So this is a slightly uh, more uh, a difficult problem to solve because it is one thing to understand uh, what is deployed. It's a slightly more difficult problem to understand what is critical, what is being used, actually. And it's a even more of a critical problem to find out that thing that I know is important. What, is this, what are the issues, and how will it uh, behave potentially in 2016? So it's a slightly diff more uh, challenging problem. And the fourth one is finally to how to fix it. Right? That's the actual remediation uh, step. So it helps for us to think in these four uh, steps so that we can take the next step. Uh, and so that we are not, uh, what do you call it, fall into the temptation of doing nothing, right? So uh, this telemetry dashboard uh, is created around this uh, four-step process. And we'll talk a little bit more about how it actually solves this in this four steps. Does this make sense? Yeah? Any questions till now? So uh, I'll quickly, uh, I'll try to go to the demo part soon. But before that, I want to quickly give you an uh, understanding of how the telemetry uh, system works. Right? I know many of you are uh, actually uh, uh, are using it, so it might be a, rep a repeat for you. But uh, for, the, for the benefit of others, I'm still going to go, go ahead and talk about uh, the, how this is uh, architected. So if you look at the office telemetry, uh, this is how it, it's basically set up. Right? It's very simple. It's not complicated. There is a set of uh, Office 2013 or 2016 or whatever Office clients that you have. And there is a telemetry foundation, which we'll talk about what it is. And finally, you have the results, the insights, whatever you're trying to learn. Uh, that's the, the telemetry dashboard. So there's the office clients, uh, which, which has the telemetry agents running. And there's this office telemetry foundation, which uh, digests the data and cooks the data and you know, uh, cre uh, creates a database of all this information. And finally, there's a front end, which is basically a reporting tool, and which is also uh, a tool where you can uh, you can uh, literally, uh, uh, if you know the right questions to ask, it'll, it'll help you to answer it. So let's look a little bit more into the telemetry foundation. What does it contain? So if you look at it, it has three, st it has three uh, aspects to it. There's a file share, and there's a processing service, and there's a database. Okay? So uh, very simply put, uh, how this works is, if you have uh, Office 2013 or 2016, the telemetry agent itself, it's already shipped with the product, right? So one good thing about this whole thing is uh, the fact that you don't need to uh, install a new agent, right? That's the last thing you guys want to do. You already have enough agents running on your machine. So it doesn't need a new agent. Uh, the, it just uses the, the agent which is already installed as a part of Office. You just need to enable the agent, right? So the agent is, uh, ships natively with Office. Uh, but it is turned off by, you know, by default. All you need to do is turn it on. And uh, not just turn it on, you also need to tell it where to send the data to. So uh, that's what we use group policy for. So group policy is to uh, you know, push the registry keys to the office clients to turn it on, first of all, and also to tell uh, where exactly you need to put the data. And the target for this data is a file share, right? It's a, it's a UNC file share path which you can also, the name of the, the exact location is also a registry key that you can push, push through using group policy. So what, that's the first step. So enable the telemetry, turning on the telemetry. Second step is uh, telling the telemetry agents where to put the data, which is the file share. And then you need to uh, set up a machine or set up a service which actually does the processing for you, right? So uh, this is, need not be a, like a high-end machine. It can be a regular machine. Uh, just two machines or three machines, depending on the number of clients that you want to manage. And uh, this, uh, this processing service uh, gets the data from the collection point, which is the file share, and puts it to a, a SQL DB. Right? And that's something, again, you need to set up. So uh, the processing service just collects the data from the file share and cooks it and puts it into the database. So the idea of having all of this 
you know, set, set up yourself is because this solution is uh, meant to work within the enterprise uh, so that all the data that is collected stays on premise, right? That's one of the most uh, founding principles of this tool. Uh, so that's why we need to have all of the setup, right? It's, it's, a, it's a pain, but it is needed for some organizations because you don't want the data to go out. Because we're talking about things like uh, file names, uh, macro names, and uh, add-in names and stuff like that. So you would want to make sure that uh, you know, the data stays on the premise. That's why all this has to be set up within the company. And finally, once the database is set up, you can use the telemetry dashboard to look at the insights, to look at the data, to query the data. And uh, there are certain reports which comes prepackaged, so you don't need to do a lot of uh, you know, you don't need to do a lot of uh, uh, clicking. Uh, the, the basic reports are pretty good. Uh, they, 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 they tell you a, a good overview of what's happening in your enterprise, how many machines are running on what versions of Office, what are the most important problems, what are the most important uh, document which has issues. So it does give you some basic uh, reports. And there's an advanced uh, custom reports that you can also generate. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, one thing I want to talk um, before we move forward is I talked about the, the, the telemetry agent, which ships along with the Office 2013 and 2016. But uh, the, the reality is uh, sometimes, so yeah, this is an uh, animation that I stole from my colleague. So it just talks about how the data collects, uh, you know, it's sent from uh, 2013 uh, machines, and it goes to the collection point, uh, and, it, and then it goes to the processing service, which puts it into the DB, and then it, it, it lights up the, the, the sheets, right? So that's the 2013 uh, story. But the, the reality, as I said, was there are still uh, machines which run earlier versions of Office, earlier than 2013, right? It could be 2010. Some of you, you know, uh, you mentioned that uh, you have machines running still 2010. So for 2010 and earlier, we have a, an MSI which we give. So this MSI, you can, you can actually uh, use SCCM and you can patch it to all your computers so that they also start uh, sending data through this platform, right? So 2013 and 2016, no, no need to do anything. The agent is already shipped by default. You just need to turn it on. But for 2010 and, and uh, before that, you need to uh, get this uh, MSI. Uh, you need to patch this MSI for all those machines. Now, one thing which I forgot to mention is, uh, which is kind of important, is this whole thing is free. Right, this whole uh, you know the dashboard, the agent, everything is all comes free. Uh, the it comes free with a single license of 2016 Pro Plus or a single license of uh, 2013 Professional. Right, so uh, it gives you the the MSI patch for patching all the Office previous versions of Office 2013 and before, and it also gives you uh, the installer for the processing engine, and it also uh, comes with the the telemetry dashboard front end as well. So the whole thing is uh, free. It, you know, the, the, uh, with the single license of either 2013 or 2016, you would get all the at artifacts needed to set up this whole thing all by yourself. The only other thing which you need is, uh, obviously, you need to set up a database, a SQL server. Uh, you know, any version of SQL server would be OK. Uh, I am actually, for the demo, I'm actually using a SQL server, uh, SQL server Express. So uh, you know, uh, any SQL inst install is going to be good. So that's one thing which I wanted to say. So the story is very similar, apart from the fact that you need to install an additional agent for 2010 and, and, and before. The everything else is the same. So the agent collects the data, sends it to a collection point, and the processing agent cooks the data and sends it to the database. And then you can query the data from those uh, legacy systems just a, not, just a regular way. Right? There's not, any, not, not much of difference. There are some sli slight differences in the kind of data that you collect from 2010 uh, when you compare it with 2013. Because uh, in 2013 and 2016, uh, we collect richer information. So you would, uh, the kind of telemetry you get is uh, a lot more granular. But uh, in terms of getting your big questions answered uh, about what add-ins are crashing, what documents are not loading, they do the job. right? It's just about uh, finding the more granular error details where uh, agents, which are uh, the office uh, machines, which are older than 2013, they do lack that granular detail, but everything else, they are the same, right? So uh, this is how the telemetry uh, system is designed. Now, one thing is, uh, as I mentioned before, 
this whole system is architected in such a way that uh, all the data remains on premise. This is kind of uh, uh, it's relevant because we are all we are not just dealing with add-ins. We are also dealing with documents, and the documents uh, it, it talks about names of documents because you identify a document by its name. So you don't want the names of the documents to you know to leave the company. So that might contain proprietary information, sensitive information. So that's why uh, we have this uh, everything set up within the enterprise. But even within that, uh, just sending the name of the document to an admin. The IT admin might be not okay. Like for example, finance team may not want to uh, may not want the IT admin to see the names of the documents, right? So for that, we have a set of controls, um, and uh, we want to talk about a little bit about this. This is to just to ensure within the organization uh, the kind of data that uh, that leaves the uh, the individual machines are kind of controlled, right? So we do this. We have these uh, privacy controls in three uh, in three different ways we can control the kind of data which leaves. First is we can uh, hide the data, we can obfuscate the, the file names, right? The second way of doing that is uh, we can filter it. Like you can say, hey, you know what? I don't think uh, Word documents are a problem for me. I don't think Word uh, add-ins are also a problem. The only thing I care about is Excel, right? So I can simply say uh, only Excel. Uh, I need all the uh, you know, data collection. And there's another level of filtering. You can say, you know what? Uh, I actually care only about add-ins. And I care about it for all the different applications, but I care only about add-ins. Or I can use a combination of this. I care about com add-ins only for Excel, right? So you do that kind of filtering. That also is possible. And the third part, uh, third way we control the kind of data that comes out is through thresholding. So how we can do this is, uh, so by default, uh, the threshold is zero, which means that uh, any document which has been used or accessed at least once uh, will be actually reported to the tool. But you can set the threshold to, say, three. If you set the threshold to three, what it actually means is that if a file is not being used by more than uh, you know, three people, it will actually not be reported. Right? So this means that uh, you know, if you have like, personal documents, which only you open, you don't ever intend to email this or share this with anyone, uh, because uh, the, sh the, the threshold is three, and because nobody else has actually seen it, automatically the telemetry system will ignore it actively. Yeah? So that's another way of uh, making sure that uh, uh, we have some amount of privacy controls. Yeah? Uh, well, no, we do have a telemetry data for 2010. So the question is, uh, do we have this kind of telemetry inside information for 2010? Is that the question? Yeah. yeah. So we do have uh, uh, telemetry data for 2010. Uh, only thing is, the telemetry agent is not shipped as a part of the Office product. You need to actually deploy an uh, agent, which you can get from the, in the, from the product itself. So uh, all you need is a, a single license of uh, 2013 or 2016. That will give you all this MSI uh, you know, patches which you can deploy in 2010. You can also go back as far as 2003, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, you can go back till 2003, and uh, you would be good. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we want you guys to do that way. Like the question is, can I uh, can I have a mix of 2010 and 13? Absolutely, yes. So you can have, yeah, you can have the data from all the different clients from 20, 2007, 2010, and 2013 and 2016. All the data can sit in one place, and you can look at data, slice it by the different versions of Office, right? Uh, I mean, this is something that we uh, we encourage people to do. Uh, have you are you familiar with the rings of validation term? Rings of validation? No. So I think you might be familiar with the concept, may not be familiar with the term. What rings of validation means is, uh, let's say you have decided to move to 2016, right? Now let's say you want to go to 2016 Pro Plus. Now what you want to do is, if you are conservative about, okay, if you want to uh, don't want too many surprises. One thing we ask you to do is uh, you deploy 2016 only to a small subset of the machines currently, and then see what are the errors which are happening, see what are the issues which are happening. And you go ahead and fix it, and you get a little more visibility into what potential issues that you might see. And then you expand it to a little more set of users. right? And then finally, once you're confident, you, you roll it out to the whole company. 
So which means that at different points in time, there will be different set of machines running on 2010, 2013, 2016, right? And you might have different set of issues for all these sets of machines. And which is exactly why this tool is super useful, because it will actually be able to tell you uh, across these different uh, platforms, across these different uh, applications, what are the different issues, right? Any other question? All right. So uh, I want to um, talk. I want to spend more time on this demo because I think this is where all the magic happens. Uh, I'll, I'll try to spend a little bit more time on the the setup, but uh, not as much time as on the demo itself, right? So I'm going to. So first, uh, uh, let me just tell a little bit about my demo setup so that you guys understand what's really happening. Uh, where is that? Yeah. So if you look at it. What, uh, what I've done is uh, I have done all of that, the first step, the, the data from the clients, and the collection point, and the processing service. All of that has done the job. I have a database, which uh, is the result of all this computation. So today for the demo, I'm just going to have the telemetry dashboard directly hitting a database, right? And I'm just going to show that so that, you know, so it's, it's not, uh, it's a cooked up uh, database. Uh, which is actually not really cooked up because it is actually from the MSIT, the Microsoft internal IT team. So I have uh, used a, a subset of that data just for the purposes of this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and open uh, the telemetry dashboard. And as I said, this telemetry dashboard uh, gets shipped as a part of uh, Office 2016 and 2010. So how I would open that is I'll just go ahead and type telemetry dashboard, right? So that's all you need to do to launch this. If you have uh, uh, 2013 or 2016, you can go ahead and try this. You will be able to see it. Now, um, as I said, I already set up uh, my machine. So the database which is I'm going to talk to is a local database. So I'm just going to say connect to the local database. And I'm just, as you can see, it's a local instance of SQL Express. I'm going to go ahead and connect. So right now, it's actually talking to my uh, SQL Express DB and getting all the data. And this is what the, the home page uh, of the report looks like. Are you guys able to see it? OK. So a few things I want to talk about. Um, we'll get more details. So uh, this is just to give you an overview of what's really happening in your uh, company, across all the machines in your company. So this is aggregated data uh, collected from you know, wherever you enable telemetry for. So at the glance, it tells you, here are the number of documents which are stable. Here are the number of documents which are not stable. Here are the solutions which are stable and not stable. So uh, when I say documents being stable, it means uh, document is considered stable if, the, uh, if, if it opens just fine. right? That's the simplistic definition I would give you. And a solution means a solution could be an add-in. Uh, it could be a comma, and it could be you know any of those extensions. So again, there the stability is defined as the ability to successfully load, right? It doesn't, it didn't crash or it didn't, uh, it, it didn't have a failure at the time of loading. Now, one cool thing is not only does it give you a number, not only does it tell you the percentage of uh, you know issues, it also gives you a trend. If you see the graphs below, that actually tells you the trend of uh, the you know stable and unstable documents. Here you can see the documents. Uh, the, the, there's a slight increase in the number of uh, 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 you know, unstable documents. And for the solution, it's even more interesting. You'll see a, a sudden increase in the uh, unstability, uh, instability of the system. Right? There are a lot more uh, add-ins which are not stable. Right? So that's something which I can, uh, I can, I can act upon. So, so the next step is, once I see a graph like this, once I see a, 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 an aggregate number like this, the next question is, uh, what are those uh, things which are actually not Stable, right? So I would go ahead and uh, you see all these numbers. All these numbers are actually clickable, right? I can actually click it and I can find out what are those uh, you know documents. So I'm going to just go ahead and click this 43 number. And uh, so I'm just going to zoom out so that you guys can see the full thing. So uh, at a glance, it tells you what are those 43 documents are actually are, right? In this case, obviously, I have not enabled authentication. So I can actually see the file names. But in case you, uh, you, know, you care about privacy a lot more, you can turn on obfuscation so that you don't see the file names. But obviously, for the demo, I want you guys to actually you know, have an idea of what's happening here. So a couple of interesting stuff, right? 
first uh, it tells you how many users are actually using the, the, the particular document. And it tells you what is the success rate of a particular document being opening just fine, right? Now, and it also tells you uh, what are the, you know, what is the type of application it is and what are the set of errors that uh, you have. And all these are actually clickable, which means you can actually click on any of this and you can find out, for example, uh, if I click this 12, it actually will tell me what are those 12 errors, right? And if I click this number 15, it will tell me who are those 15 users, right? So it's like uh, all this information is immediately accessible. Now, one thing, if I, uh, one, one cool thing about this is that this, uh, if you remember the four step process that we talked about, right? The first step is uh, discovery, finding out what's out there. The second part is prioritization. Now, this one, this report, just in one click, you're able to do step one and step two, right? Because you are able to identify all the issues in one step. And you are also able to find out what are the prior, what is the, like, you can create a priority here, right here, based on different pivots. You can create a prioritization based on number of usage, number of users, and the kind of errors. So if I, if I am an admin, let's say, and I look at the graph, look at data like this, so probably what I would do is, even though the first uh, document had like zero percentage success, probably I would not spend time on it right away because there's just two users using it, right? What is even, what is more interesting is the doc, third document, which is a fundraiser.xls. So this is having 33 percentage success rate of loading successfully, but it is used by a lot more people. 15 users are using it, right? So this is immediately something that I can action upon because I feel, you know, uh, this is more uh, value for the time that I spend, right? So you can, you can appreciate, right, how this tool in one, in one report, it, tell, it helps me to not just identify the issues, but it also helps me to prioritize issues, right? And what's even more cool is I can go ahead and click this 15 and I can find out who are those users who are actually using this document and who are actually fa facing these issues. Right? So I know that uh, you know, it, uh, these are the set of users who are actually uh, using it. And you know what's even more interesting? There's this uh, column called author. So that's the metadata associated with that file. So I know that this document has been authored by one person, it's been used by many people. Right? So if I want to talk about remediation, that's my next step. Right there it tells me, this document is used by 15 users. It has 33 percentage success rate which means it's a non, uh, uh, you know, insignificant failure rate. And it also tells me who is the owner of the document, right? Isn't that great? I mean, that's exactly, that tells you exactly what you need to do next, right? So you can do all kinds of uh, filtering here. You can uh, go back to the documents and you can say, hey, you know what? I don't care about uh, any of the stuff. I don't care about PowerPoint and Word. I just care about Excel. So tell me what's happening in Excel so I can do all that kind of filtering here. So. That's about the documents. Any questions? Does it make sense? Yeah? So, like, no, go ahead. I can repeat your question. So, in the, you know, showing the user the location as soft point, but what about if you have a similar content type and because your template, base template for the content type is what is causing issues? So, it might be 300 documents made off of it. Great question, uh, but unfortunately, the, uh, for, <laughs> I don't think the tool will directly tell you that. It can't do that, yeah, because it is based on uh, the file name. So the question, uh, just uh, to repeat, is if uh, the, the issue is uh, based out of a SharePoint template, which is e essentially broken, uh, it could uh, surface as hundreds of errors because it's used by hundreds of documents, right? But unfortunately, the, the telemetry dashboard does not, would not be able to tell you that kind of detail, but what I can probably tell you is uh, you, can, you, can, you can find out that you know, these are the set of documents which are failing. And that would hopefully get you thinking, get, get you started thinking about what is the reason for the problem, right? Maybe you will talk to the author. Maybe you will actually try to open it up. And then you will find out, hey, you know what? This is the reason why it is failing. So just to give you an understanding, this is not a... Uh, this is not a monitoring, I wouldn't say monitoring, this is not a, a tool to fix it, right? This is not a debugging tool, right? This is a monitoring, uh, this is a, just a telemetry tool. It's a monitoring tool. It gives you data. Now it's up to you how, how you can make use of the data. 
it is a very objective reporter of data. It just tells you, here are the stuff which is happening in your, in your enterprise. Here are the errors which are happening. Now, each of those errors does not necessarily mean that something is broken, right? And an uh, and error just, uh, in, you know, if you look at this, uh, the, the, the critical informative and all those stuff, those are events. So this event does not necessarily mean that something is broken, right? It might be that there are some errors which are happening, but the user's experience of the add-in or the document is just fine. So it is an objective reporter of uh, data. Now you need to combine that with your subjective understanding of what's really happening with the users and tr figure out how to fix it, right? So yeah, that's, that's uh, about the, the documents. Does it make sense? Yeah, have a question? Yeah. Great question. Yeah. So the success rate uh, is it the is it the success rate of 2016? If or is it the success rate of the current version of Office? So the answer is it is the current version of Office wherever the document was opened. For example, this particular document, the fundraiser.xls, it could have been opened by five different users across five different machines across five different op, you know Office versions. So it's a it's a, a, a aggregate of all of that, right? So, uh, so this which kind of brings up the next point of, let us say I'm not interested in uh, the success rate of the file as a whole. I'm interested in success rate of the file for a particular version of Office, right? That would be a next question. So it's absolutely possible to do that. So I'll try to get to it as, as soon as I can. So uh, just as we uh, saw how with just the overview report, the built-in reports, I'm able to go uh, level by level into the actual problem. Uh, we can do the same thing with the solutions, the add-ins. So I'm just going to go through this a little faster because we're running out of time. So uh, I see there are 37 um, unstable solutions. So I just click it, and then I, I see this uh, report, which tells me here are the set of add-ins, here are the number of users, and the success rate as before, and the set of errors that you see. And uh, it also is categorized by applications. right? Now let's say I want to just look at Word add-ins. So I'm going to do this filtering. I see a bunch of word add-ins. And out of this, I want to look at the most important ones. So guess what the most important one is? The first one, right? Because it's used by 191 users, and it has a success rate of 0. Bam, something is going wrong there, right? So I want to know what it is. So the, first, uh, in, 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 the next immediate step I would probably want to do is, I know it's failing, and I know there are two critical errors which are being firing. So let me find out what those two critical errors are. So I go ahead and click that number two. Uh, do, you, do you see what I did? I just clicked the two here, right? That, that's the two critical errors. I just clicked that to find out what are those two critical errors are. And it tells me uh, it has fired once for add-in crash and once for failure to load, right? Now, that may not be enough information for me to fix the issue, but at least it'll, it'll help me to at least get started, right? Now, maybe I will go back and find out who's using this add-in. And I'll try to find out who bought the add-in from a third-party company or whatever, right? So you see the, you see the big picture of what, what this tool is all about, right? It tries to give you data that you can get started. It, it, uh, like if you go back to the four-step process that we talked about, it, it does the inventory. It also does the, the prioritization. It tries to diagnose the problem, but it's not an objective. It's not a complete uh, diagnosis. It just tells you the, the potential errors. But the remediation and uh, deciding whether or not so this is something which needs to be fixed and actually going, going ahead and fixing it is something that you guys have to do, right? You need to, you need to talk to folks. You need to find out whether this is something which is really broken and find out who is the owner. It will it'll point you. Uh, for all of those issues, it will try to point you. For example, it will tell you who the author of the document is. For an add-in, it will tell you who are the users who are using it. Hopefully, all of this will help you to do the, the final step, which is the remediation. Right? I'm sorry? Absolutely, yeah. You're going to say, hey, bro, what's happening with this document? This is failing for all the, all the users. So that's the idea of the, the tool. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, some of the, before we go into the custom reports, which is my favorite feature, uh, I want to talk about how you can track the overall uh, status of Office deployment using this uh, tool. So one other uh, standard report that comes with this uh, tool is the 
the office deployment trend, right? So this will tell you at any point in time how many versions of, uh, I mean, how many people are using uh, what versions of office and the trend associated with that. So uh, somebody was asking me about the, uh, you know, uh, the, the rings of uh, validation. So here's the way by which you can actually visualize it. Like if you're trying, to, let's say if you're, many of you I'm sure you're considering upgrading to 2016. Now uh, you can actually see how, you know, how your rollout of 2016 is progressing. A great report to show to your manager, right? If you want to give it, get in one place, how many machines are onboarded to 2016? Just one place where you can get this data for free. And uh, a little more information uh, is also available about uh, the deployment trend, which is, uh, there's a deployment tab. If you go here, it'll actually tell you uh, the different versions of Office. This is a point in time data. So uh, the standard report in this particular tab just gives you the point in time data. But obviously, this also can be plotted as a trend if you know how to use the custom reports, right? So it also it, it tells you the versions of Office. It also tells you whether it's 32 bit or 64 bit. Uh, quick show of hands. How many of you are considering 64 bit uh, Office for your next deployment? OK, thank you. So uh, now I want to take some time uh, to talk about some of the, the custom reports uh, uh, that we want to create. So what have we seen till now? are the basic reports which just come out of box. So you don't need to do a lot of uh, you know, uh, query. You just need to click a few buttons, and you can uh, nail down the problem, and you can nail down the source of the problem. right? But sometimes it helps to uh, uh, have a platform by which you can actually uh, articulate a problem, that, uh, articulate a question that you're trying to, uh, uh, to get an answer for. Like you have a very specific, uh, this custom reports is for you know scenarios where you have a very specific problem, a very specific uh, question in your mind, and you want an answer for it, right? So, for example, let's start with the rings of validation. So, uh, you're tr you're trying to onboard 2016. You're, you're hoping to start onboarding to 2016, and as discussed, you want to not do it for the whole you know organization at once. You want to start with a, a small set of users, right? So. One question is, let's say uh, I have uh, deployed 2016 to, let's say, 50 users. And uh, the remaining of the users are in the previous versions of Office. Now, a simple question is, how are those 50 users' um, experiences? What, is that any different from uh, the rest of the folks? So that's, that's something which you can, uh, that's a very clear uh, question. And that's a clear data point which you can answer that question. And it can lead to a next step, right? Because based on how their experiences. Uh, you can you can roll it out to a much bigger set of users, so you can use a custom report for that. So first, uh, you know this is a tab associated with it. So you just go ahead and click a create custom report. This will uh, if you click this, it will create a basic custom report, and using which you can build on top of this and you can add additional um, additional elements to answer the question that you want to answer. So this is the basic custom report. It tells you what are the different issues across the board, and what is the hit count, what is the frequency of that particular issue, right? So this is across documents, it's across add-ins, it's across everything, right? Now, we don't want to know the issue uh, name of the issue itself. What we're trying to answer is, uh, for a particular version of Office, what are the number of issues that I'm trying to face, right? So I'm going to remove the issue title, because I don't care about it for this particular report that I'm trying to build. And I want to uh, understand what are the count of error, count of events for a particular version of Office. So I go back and I see this uh, application version detail, right? So I just go ahead and click this. So this will actually tell me the different builds of Office and f associated with that, what is the number of events? So a quick uh, reminder about what event ID means. So Event ID refers to you know, a, a unique identifier for an event. And event itself is, a, is something which happened which can be potentially not good. right? <laughs> That's the, uh, the thing I can say. It does not mean that it's failures. right? It does not mean that something is broken. It just means that something bad happened, but it may or may not result in a functional problem. right? So it's, it's a good proxy for how things are happening in the system. So if there are less number of events, which means probably there's not much uh, problems happening. So here I can find out, uh, here in this particular sample data, it is Office 
2016 is not there, but you can imagine, right, if you have multiple versions of Office, and even within the same version of Office, even within 2016, if you have deployed different builds, you would get all that information in this one report, right? You can find out, let's say, uh, you guys are familiar with the deferred channel and the current channel in 2016? Are you aware of it? Okay, some of you are. So uh, if you are, let's say, uh, you're, uh, you're trying a, a particular version of uh, uh, you know, current channel, and you, you rolled it out to a specific set of users, you can find out how many of them are facing issues for that particular build of 2016, right? So it gets you that level of detail. And of course, based on this, you can, uh, same as before, you can narrow down this into a specific error, which you can go and try to address, right? And the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, next report, next uh, thing I want to talk about is, tell me all the macros which are running in my, uh, you know, in my enterprise. So this is something which we keep hearing, because macro is something anybody can write, a power user in your enterprise can write, and he may not necessarily inform you, right? He would have just, you know, he would have talked to his boss or whatever. I'm sorry? Or she, yes. So uh, he or she might not have, uh, uh, you know, told anybody. It is a completely democratic process. Anybody would have written a, a macro. Now, when you're migrating for to 2016, you would want to absolutely know what are those macros which folks have written and what are the potential errors that you're seeing. So. I'm going to say how we're going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this application version. And I want to know the names. I want to identify the name of the file or the macro through the file name, right? So there is a, a field here which says file name. So I'm going to hunt for it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah. There you have it. So file name, right? So it tells me what are the different files associated uh, uh, you know, with the events. And I'm going to go ahead and sort it based on the number of times the event has occurred. So I'm going to go ahead and sort it from largest to smallest, right? And you see all kinds of stuff here. You have DLLs. You have all kinds of stuff. Obviously, I'm not interested in a DLL because DLL typically corresponds to a com add-in. So I want to filter it based on uh, whether or not it has, uh, you know, it's potentially a macro. So for that, what I do is uh, I go ahead and insert the slicer, and I want to slice it based on the fact that it has any of this enabled, right? Has external data connectivity, right? It's a good proxy for whether it's, a, uh, it's doing anything funny. It has an OLE component. It has a VBA. So I'm going to go ahead and install, uh, enable all of this uh, slicers. So once I have this here, now I can play around with this and find out what are the ones which are interesting. So let's say, to start out with, I want to look at all the ones which have VBA enabled. So I just click this true, and boom, I see a much, much smaller list of documents potentially having VBA macros, right? And it also tells me uh, what are the names and what is the number of issues that the user can you know, potentially see. So that's immediately actionable information for me. I don't need to call people. I don't need to do a manual inventory process. If I just run the telemetry for a week, I get this data, right? And uh, so if, if, you know, if, I, if somebody asks me a question, uh, like how confident are we about macros in 2016, I don't have to do any guesswork. I know the facts, right? I know which are the macros which are being used. And all I need to do is make sure that these four macros work in 2016 and, and done, right? And uh, one really good thing about this uh, approach is that it leaves the, uh, it, do, it doesn't bog you down with details, right? One of the biggest issues that we keep hearing is, it's not that macros are hard to solve, right? It's not, it's not rocket science. It's, it's, we know how to solve it. It's just that we don't know what to solve for. Because there's tons of macros. If you do a, uh, like a file scanning kind of a thing, you will have n, like thousands of macros. But the problem is not all of them are being used. Right? Many of them would have been old, and they might have never been used. They're not at least currently being used. So this one helps you to narrow down to the ones which are critical to your business. And that's the ones you should care about, about fixing it. Yeah. No, you don't. You can uh, see once you know the file name, right? You can find out who owns the file, and then you have to just find out, you know, uh, you talk to the person and find out what the macro is they're using. Another question. So if you have a macro, it's let's say Excel, and your macro is doing a bunch of stuff in Excel, but then it's also opening up other Office applications, 
Wherever the macro uh, was in, well, it's a part of, so this Excel. Oh, Excel. Yeah. And again, as I said, uh, so these are, by the way, great points. I, I appreciate your feedback. You, what you want to know is um, the actual line of code which had the problem. Is that what you're looking for, right? Oh, well, yeah. It's just like 40 macros <laughs> Sure. Yeah, sure. I, I take that as a feedback, right? Yeah, but as of now, that uh, that's not how this uh, tool is defined for. It is not a debugging tool. Uh, what you're talking about is a more of a debugging and a remediation tool, right? So it doesn't do that. Um, but uh, this one actually just tells you what document name to go after. Uh, the next level of detail it doesn't give, unfortunately, right? Any other question? Yeah. Yes. So uh, the performance here is specifically, uh, we have the performance metrics for uh, add-ins. Because that's where it's more uh, relevant for. For normal documents, uh, I, I believe we don't have that functionality. It, the, the, the performance numbers in terms of the load time and whatnot is meant only for the, the COM add-ins. Uh, but again, that I would also take it as a feedback. Uh, so we don't have that. Uh, so you, what you're saying is there are a bunch of Excel documents which take longer than the usual, and I want to understand that. Okay. No, uh, we don't. Uh, we don't have that. Uh, so the only performance numbers we have is the add-in performance numbers. Uh, with that, you can find out. But the the document loading itself. We don't have them because it's uh, technically it's possible, but it's not something that we heard from a lot of customers. Uh, but I will take that as a data point for us. Yeah. You second that as well. Yeah. Perfect. I'll take a note of that. Thank you for your feedback. Yeah. So uh, where were we? So this is just about this is a tool for the you know understanding the. The identifying the macros, so you can play around with this, right? You can play around how much ever you want. You if you can say I want only ones which has uh, which doesn't have VBA, but which has a OLE component. I have a different list, and I can play around with this, right? It's completely up to you guys how you want to slice and dice. Okay, so I'm going to go and create a different report uh, so that we explore a little more about the uh, the this thing. So how about? Um, more on the lines of what you guys have been talking about, which is documents, right? Uh, documents, uh, we have, there are a lot of documents, and you want to measure the performance of documents on a particular version of uh, Office. So, and specifically, you want to look after the authors who authored those documents. So one of the things that we have here is a field called author. So I'm going to go ahead and find that field. And okay, there it is. So I'm going to enable this, right? So immediately I get a different, uh, you know, set of data points. This tells me not by document names, but by the document author, right? Again, I'm going to sort it based on the number of uh, events that I see here. And boom, I see the guy who has written the maximum number of documents, right? <laughs> he is a, you know, he's the guy I need to talk to. And I know that, uh, you know, it's not just an, he's authored a lot of documents, it's also that he has authored a lot of documents which is causing issues. So maybe he's doing something funny there, right? Maybe I need to understand more about it. So awesome report, immediate, you know, action item, immediately actionable stuff, great stuff. And I can add more power to this. And say, you know what? I don't want. I don't care about all documents across all versions of Office. How about I want to only look at uh, the authors based on a particular version of Office? So remember the previous uh, field that we used. We talked about this uh, application version. So this is the field which identifies the version of Office. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, a slicer, and I'm going to slice it by the application version. There it is. Right? And now, I don't see, I don't want to see uh, for all of these builds. I want to see it for a specific version of a build. So let's say, let's assume for a fact that this is the, the new Pro Plus build, uh, 2016 Pro Plus build that I'm trying to, uh, you know, 
uh, find out how it's doing. And I know that uh, I want to identify the authors who are causing maximum issues with document types. This is the report which will tell me exactly that. And I want to uh, do a little more analysis on this. Let's say I want to, I'm not satisfied with this. I want to go one step further and I want to insert another uh, slicer based on the type of document. Is it just Excel? Is it just Word? So that should be something here which says application. Yeah, there it is. So now I have an additional slicer which will help me to do this, right? I know the guys who are creating the maximum, uh, you know, maximum number of documents which are causing problems with Excel as opposed to anything else, right? Again, great information, uh, immediately actionable stuff. Uh, it completely takes the guesswork out of uh, 2016 validation. So one final report, uh, which I want to talk about in the custom report uh, section, is about, uh, I'm going to remove all of this, and uh, about, how about, how about this application? Just give me a sec here. That is the application. Yeah. So you guys familiar with group policy? Yeah. You have you use actively use group policy in your company? Okay. So most of you. So the next report I'm talking about uh, it uses uh, group policy as a way of uh, identifying additional insights. So. This is, an, this is an advanced feature, so to speak. So remember when you talked about how the telemetry system works, the, the data is collected by the agent, and it sends to the file share, and then it sends to the database, and then you have this report. Now, there is an, one additional uh, nuance here. When you, when you configure, when you turn on the telemetry engine on the uh, Office clients, you can additionally say through group policy that not only do you just send Office data, but you can also add additional group policy uh, uh, you know, uh, fields. So for example, if you already have a key structure in your organization which uh, has key different values for, let's say, departments or, you know, geography or whatever, you can add those, you can push those additional uh, tags along with your office telemetry data. Now what this actually means is you can actually slice and dice this office telemetry data based on your group policy settings. For example, I can find out how cool would it be if I want to understand, you know, what are the uh, macro problems in Excel for accounting team, right? That would be more useful for me, uh, if, especially if, uh, if the IT team is, uh, is siloed in terms of uh, different uh, departments. That would be something that I would care about. I would not want to care about every Excel macro. I would want to care about the macros which are specific to my department. So we have flexibility of adding up to four um, uh, custom uh, labels. So if you see the end of this, uh, uh, the pivot fields, there are four uh, uh, labels, four fields which are just called as label one, label two, label three, and label four. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a slicer uh, based on the label two, which in Microsoft, it, uh, it stands for the department, right? Now, this simple report tells me what are the issues which are happening across the different applications and across all the different departments. Let's say I want to only look at finance. I just click this finance, and I find out what are the top issues. So Excel uh, is the number two. I expected it to be number one, but it is number two. And uh, Outlook is supposedly the, the more error-causing application for finance department, right? Isn't that cool? I mean, that's exactly tell you, you know, where you need to look for. If I'm a finance team, I would care about Outlook. And then I'll go to the next step and find out what are those top add-ins within that Outlook. And that will help me to take the next steps, right? So I am almost come to the end of my demo. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah. I'm sorry. How do you send these attributes? Uh, I can. Uh, there is a whole lot of documentation associated with it. I can. I can give you that right away. Right. Yeah, I did. So that was using the uh, whatever errors that you see, you can slice it based on the office version. Yeah, but isn't that the version they're currently using? Because what I care about is what they're Yeah. Again, a great feedback point. I will take that. Uh, so the answer is no. It does not tell you. What you're asking for is predict for me 
how this document will perform in 2016. That's what you want, right? We don't have that yet. Yeah? <laughs> what we have is how this document will perform in the platform that is currently being used, which could be anything, which could be, if it was open in 2013, I would know how it has been open in 2013. If it was open by 2016, I would know how it is, how, how was its behavior in 2016. But uh, again, uh, we are working on something like that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a, while, in a bit, right? But as of now, uh, it helps you to identify uh, currently uh, happening issues. So, and that could be in any uh, particular version of Office. And that's where this rings of validation is useful because, because you cannot predict what's going to happen in 2016. What you can do is you can actually roll out 2016 to a subset of users and then use that as a proxy to figure out how this will happen for the rest of the organization. Does that make sense? It's not, I like the answer, though. Sure. <laughs> sure, yeah, I take that. I take that as a feedback, yeah. So uh, I am I'm done with the demo. Any, any questions about the demo, what you just saw? OK. I want to go back here. Uh, I haven't, i actually running out of time. I have 15 more minutes. So I want to talk a little bit about, I ha I'm going to skip a couple of sections, OK? Uh, I am going to skip directly to um, the future plans. So uh, I'll tell you what I skipped, right? And I, I want to make sure that you guys get that information. I'll skip the section on how to set it up. So there is a step-by-step -step guide on how to set it up. Uh, this uh, slide has that information. There's a lot of videos and there's a lot of documentation available. And also, all the stuff that you saw, all those uh, pivot fields that I, took me a long time to identify which one, all of that is documented in TechNet. So you can totally you know, go, go around and figure out uh, what is the exact uh, field that you want that would help you to answer your question. So I've, I'm kind of skipping all of that stuff, but it's, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, I was able to do it, so I'm sure it's pretty simple. Uh, so I want to quickly spend some time about what we are currently thinking uh, for building the next version of our uh, dashboard. So uh, some of those aspects has already been, uh, had come out already in our discussion. Many of you guys raised very valid points, right? Uh, you wanted to know uh, specifically, for example, how a document or an add-in will function in 2016. You don't want to know what's happening. You, you're telling me, don't tell me what's ha already happening. Right? You want to know how it's going to behave in 2016, right? And that other, other aspects of, uh, uh, you know, uh, mostly about tell me how, uh, how my system is a, Will, will, will function if I move to 2016. So one of the challenges that we are facing is that our ability to diagnose problems and also our ability to remediate problems. Remember the other point we talked about, uh, you know, don't tell me this document name has issues. Tell me which uh, line of code in the macro has issues, right? So what you're asking for is really remediation. You want to not just know about what is the problem, but you also want to know how do I fix it, right? Tell me the line of code which I, which I need to change. So for both of these kinds of, both this kind of uh, capabilities, uh, what we have found is that our current way of doing things doesn't scale. What I mean by the current way of doing things is that we have built this whole model, this whole product, based on the premise that all of the data which is collected doesn't leave the organization, right? It, uh, you know, it all stays, it's all collected, it's all stays in the, uh, on the, uh, within the company, and you see a report based on that, right? But to answer some of these questions, uh, we would, uh, we would be, it'll be super useful if you are able to send this data, if not all of the data, a some small anonymized aggregated form of data. If you can send it to the cloud, we can do a much better job of telling you what is the real stuff which is broken and more importantly, how to fix it, right? Because we are able to leverage the data from, not just from your enterprise, I'll be able to leverage the data from all the other enterprises and I'll be able to solve the answer for you. So that's really the, 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 the thinking that we are currently having. And that's where uh, my uh, survey, I want to remind you about the survey. So the main questions that I want to ask about is these two questions, right? So I want to just read out the question. It's basically the same point that I just made. Currently, the tool does not send any collected data uh, to Microsoft because, uh, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, sharing this information, the names of add-ins and usage patterns with Microsoft would actually help us to do a much, much better job of uh, giving you like, uh, like information about how it's actually going to work in 2016 and also about remediation, how to fix it if, uh, if something is expected to break in 2016. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this? Do you think this is fine? 
sending this data to Microsoft as long as it does not have PII, as long as it does not have file names. What do you what do you guys think about it? Like you can take a you can take a minute to go to the uh, uh, the the, for, the survey, but you, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about this? Is it sending data to the cloud to solve these questions? Is that a is that a viable option? Oh really? Oh Jesus, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Uh, do you mind uh, meeting me after if you have a minute? Awesome, awesome. Or you can do one thing. You can email me. I'll send you my card. You can email me at your leisure, right? Is that will that work? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how many of you would say yes for this? Yes, you don't mind sending data to the cloud. Perfect. Thank you. How many of you say no? No, it's not an option. I don't want to send data. Okay. Thank you. So uh, for the guys who say no, uh, can you help us understand what is the concern? Like, I want to I want to understand what is the reason why you you know why this would not be an option for you guys. Due to security. Okay. Sure. No, but uh, uh, just to understand uh, more uh, better. So, is the security because of the you concerned about the names of documents being leaking? So, it's this privacy aspect of it, or is it the security aspect of it? Okay. So, uh, when you say uh, privacy, I understand because it could be the names of the documents and identity of the documents, and more importantly, identity of the users because you saw the names of the users and stuff. So, I understand. I get that, but and it could potentially be a security issue as well. But how about uh, we remove the names? We don't care about names. We don't care about the names of documents. We only care about the add-ins because most of the issues are about the add-ins, right? You don't know whether a, a version of add-in that you installed from a third party, that's a problem or not. And you would want to predict how this add-in is going to behave in 2016. So how about just sending the, the identity of the add-in along with just raw numbers about telling people that so many users are using it. And it is not, does not identify the organization also. It is just raw numbers, right? Would that? Uh, address your concerns? I don't know. I just saw a little paper to find out. Sure, yeah. Got it, got it. Thanks for your input. I'm not sure that it would be an issue, but you know, as soon as they say that there's data going outside the organization, then there's like a 30-page long Awesome. <laughs> I thought of that, yeah. Um, what about the rest? What do you, what do you, what do you feel is uh, blocking you guys to send this kind of data? Like, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, you know, processes, but can you be more articulate on what are the issues? How about this? Like uh, one thing which we keep hearing is uh, the fact that you know people get paranoid when you just send binary data. How about we actually show you the data that we are going to send before we send it? Will that address your concerns? Will that address your concerns? Okay. So how many of you, those who raised your hand for the second option, saying no, you don't want to send data? How many of you can say that I would change the answer if I know what this, the data which is being sent to cloud? Okay, got it. Okay, cool. Sure. Sure, awesome. Uh, the second part of the, the survey is yes, sir. Got it. So you want visibility around and controls around who accesses the data which is being sent. Yeah, thank you. So the second part of this is, uh, what about the setup? I mean, we know the first, we have heard multiple from multiple people here that uh, the functionality itself needs to be updated. Like you talked about, a bunch of you talked about uh, remediation stuff. You talked about uh, diagnosis, like really knowing what's going to happen in 2016. It's all you care about, right? So that's the remediation and the diagnosis part. But how about the setup? Like what we talked about, you need to set up a bunch of agents. Mostly, you, hopefully you don't. But if it is 2013 or if it is lesser than 2013, you need to set up the agents. You need to set up a file share. You need to set up a bunch of processor engines. And you need to set up a SQL DB. All of this is needed to be set up because you want the data to be on the premise, right? So is that a blocker? Is that something that you think can be solved by just pushing all of this stuff to the cloud? So I, I feel like the second design, our 0365 PA, which is just your delegate domain, that could come with it. Because you know we're going to be hybrid and migrating everything for the next forever. Sure.
Awesome. <laughs> Great point. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You didn't find this setup difficult. You found it very easy. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. <laughs> so what I'm hearing from you guys is that setup is not an issue. Is that what you're saying? Okay, okay, that's good to know. I'll I'll tell my team, and they'll be happy. But I I totally hear your point. Sure, sure. David, is there anything else? So yeah, I, I'm almost out of time. I have like five more minutes. Uh, I'll be around for some questions, but uh, I'm going to send this. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, 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 documents available here. Uh, David, can you get my uh, this thing, my visiting cards? I'm sorry about the the, the survey, uh, but I do appreciate if you can fill the remaining fields because all the remaining questions are all uh, like you know they are, they are choose the correct answer kind of questions. So please go ahead and fill it. We'll really appreciate your time and your effort. Perfect. So uh, if you have any subjective stuff, like many of you have, I'm going to pass around my card. So please do email me. I would love to hear. I really appreciate your time spending, uh, you st time spending here. And we would love to know about uh, some of your thoughts on how we take this forward. Right? Thanks a lot, guys.